Details Garage, we are going to be working on a Mark IV TDI, aka the Outlander. Uh, we are doing the fuel cutoff solenoid because the car pretty much has been turning off when we've been accelerating. So uh, right now, you'll notice it's going all fast forward due to multiple reasons. I forgot the setting was turned on, so there's no audio, no nothing. Uh, right now, you're watching the car proceed forward, and then it turns off. Proceed forward and turns off. This is due to the full fuel cutoff solenoid failing. So we're going to pop the hood. We're going to show you where it's located. It's super easy. Uh, this solenoid is pretty common for failing on TDIs over time. So bear with me again, guys. This is something that's super easy to do. Very, very easy to, uh, to do. Uh, so I recommend a 8 millimeter socket and a 1.5 inch uh, crescent wrench. That's all you need to do this entire job. It's super, super easy. It's located here uh, by the uh, pump. So it's where it sends fuel uh, to the engine. And if there's for some reason it sees an issue, it will cut it off. Uh, it can be due to multiple reasons, voltage or an actual problem mechanical failure. So here it is located right here where I'm pointing with my finger. And then you'll see right here the wire that I'm touching. That is the uh, signal that is sent to the solenoid to turn it on and turn it off again this happens due to multiple reasons um, so the primary reason is a voltage issue uh, currently in this scenario my this the actual solenoid failed so that's why i have to replace it i tested it uh, with the battery and it just would not the plunger would not actually activate so this is why we're having this problem so now we're actually going to remove it you see right here, I broke it loose with a wrench and just twist it very slowly with my fingers. I don't want to uh, drop this little tiny nut. It's really small, so be very, very careful with it. Uh, and try to get it out with you know your hand. I'm doing this job actually with one hand, so and at the same time I'm, I am filming. The little wire comes right off, set it aside, and now we're ready to break this guy loose. Uh, this is where your uh, crescent wrench is going to come into play. I would definitely recommend, if you're not careful, remove the dipstick. Uh, it's really simple to remove. There's a little clip on the very bottom of the base of the dipstick that helps you pull the dipstick out and pull it out. Uh, one thing I do recommend is that be very careful with the fuel lines that are there. You can uh, possibly uh, damage them by using the crescent wrench and tugging. Uh, you'll notice here some diesel fuel will leak out. It's okay. It's what happens. The system is pressurized, so some fuel will leak out. Uh, it's okay. Just make sure when you pull that uh, solenoid out, the, you see that black portion on the top. That is the plunger. Um, there's a spring on the inside. Make sure you don't lose it. Uh, just is just in case that when the replacement part that you do receive um, doesn't have the spring, so you can swap things over. It should have it, but I've seen it in scenarios where it doesn't have it. Uh, you'll see the braided fuel line right there on the right hand corner. Just be careful with that. It, it's a possibility uh, it can fall out. Here is the part number. If you guys can see here, F002D13642. It's a Bosch OEM replacement part. Super, super easy. Pretty cheap. I think I got it for like $16 on fcpeuro.com. Unfortunately, Eurotuning did not provide had this part on their website or I couldn't find it. I don't know. Uh, you see here me pressing on the brand new plunger and there's a new O-ring on the inside. Uh, be very careful when you top it in, uh, put it in. Make sure it goes in nice and it centers. It has to fall into place. If it doesn't fall into place, it will not seal correctly. And you have a big possibility of damaging the plunger or the spring at the same time. Uh, this is the part where you're going to want to get ready and then twist it by hand as far down as possible that you can before you even introduce the wrench uh, to this process because you have a, an ability of damaging it um, so be very careful so one thing i did uh, realize when i was doing this process uh, when i tighten it down with the wrench i recommend getting it where it's really snug and then turn it a little bit more not too much Turn the car on and look if there's any leaks. Um, make sure though, before you do that, you get a rag and you clean off the surface area because you do fall into a chance of it um, uh, giving you a false positive or false negative where it's leaking. 
Uh, make sure you put the wire back on. Make sure the hoses are back in place correctly. Uh, that way you don't have any leaks during this process. I'm going to come back inside here and we're going to turn the car on and see how she does in just a moment. And right here on the old part, she's going to set it aside. <laughs> I'm holding the camera with my elbow. Hopefully I can show you guys here how it looks. Give me just a moment here. And you'll see here, I'm going to take it out. And there's a spring on the inside of it. You see right there, that spring, um, don't lose it. It's super important. Um, that spring pretty much is what provides the, the forward and up and down motion on top of the electronic portion of the plunger where it pushes it out. Um, again, if you have any mechanical issues or any voltage issues, it will activate the plunger and shut off your fuel. It's a very common problem again with these cars. Here's my mug. <laughs> so right now we're gonna do a quick test and make sure there is uh, no leaks. I'm gonna turn the car on in just a moment. Fire it up. All right, it's running. Now we're gonna head over and see if we have any leaks uh, coming and remember I had to clean off the surface area before you do it and we want to look right there on the seam if you see anything like seeping out uh, if you do see it um, just go back in turn off the car and then retighten the, uh, the, the thing I ended up actually having a small tiny leak so I went back I tightened it I turn off the engine and then give it another crank with my crescent wrench and then tighten it down and it solved the problem. Now we're going to go out for a test ride. Um, you'll see I'm having the, the, the blinking light on there. Um, that's because again the issue was is that I didn't reset the codes yet. My thing right now I want to go give it a try and see if the car turns off with the new cutoff uh, solenoid. So we're going to go and do a quick uh, rip in the car just to see if it turns off. If it doesn't Problem is solved. I'm go over here and do a quick little donut. And the car didn't turn off. Uh, in the previous scenario, the moment I accelerated under a heavy load, the car immediately just turned off. Just like that. And it was very, very annoying. Um, I could not get the car to stay on. Uh, under a load under the accel acceleration load so that was part of the problem that we were having but that's it guys uh, that's pretty much how we fix the fuel cutoff solenoid thank you guys for watching and you guys have yourself a wonderful day peace out as always